All right, you guys, so starting off this video, I wanna say that sometimes the internet is right, sometimes I feel as though I'm right. In the last video, I said I was going to glue the carpet down, which kind of got mixed up a little bit. It's not literal, just straight up glue. It's a spray adhesive that's like meant to hold down carpet. And I'll explain why I thought I should do that in a little bit, but you guys, I started this channel for a couple reasons. Uh, the main one was documentation for the truck, so I could see later on in years how the trucks progressed from when I bought it, which has worked pretty well. You know, it's, I really like looking at older videos. Uh, and the second one was it's developed into a, a community which I really really get to fall back on all the time I can ask questions you guys are super super helpful always have great reasoning for for things that you say and that was clearly shown in the last video so I said that I wanted to glue the carpet down a lot of you guys were saying no 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 why would you do that and it wasn't just saying no it was a lot of you guys were giving me reasons as to why and alternatives for that which was really really good it's almost like my comment section was a forum which is kind of what I want and um, I really really like you guys' creative feedback it really gives me something to think about and to be quite honest like I said sometimes the internet wins sometimes I win and what I think is right and to be honest, you guys actually kind of changed my mind. I was going to use a spray adhesive, which isn't quite a literal glue. You wouldn't just, you know, throw Elmer's glue all over your floor or actual super glue straight up all over the floor and just slap your carpet on it. That's not what I meant. I meant using a spray adhesive that was meant for carpet. Now, obviously, I was thinking about that. I'm not going to be doing that anymore because a lot of you guys give good reasons as to, you know, the seats, there's trim, there's other pieces that are meant to hold the carpet down. It is molded to my truck. It should fit and work fine. I started to look around a little bit. Some, some spots still are, you know, it will be loose without glue, but it's just like, eh, you know, it's something I gotta live with. It really does make sense for me though, because this truck comes apart so often, it's a constant project that keeps on going, that I should just leave the carpet and set it in there. Because for whatever reason I need to weld or put something back together, I can do it. I can pull it out without having to rip glue up or anything like that, it would be a mess. But let's just say for instance, that this was a show car I was building and the carpet was never to have any reason to come up again. I would actually use the spray adhesive because it would sit a little bit better in all the little tight corners and stuff like that, which is what I'll actually go into in a second. So the reason that I was even considering using glue was say for instance, you know, they got a little bit of a piece that's what well, you guys can't see. Just a little bit of a lip right there. Uh, the main ones were right here. You know, the tr it's got the main tranny hump right there uh, and then it'll go up again from there. And I was thinking that maybe, you know, I could, you know, tuck that in a little bit tighter and then the glue would, would actually hold it on both sides. Same with up on the on the actual firewall section. You can see that doesn't quite lay flat. Uh, and then there's a couple other spots throughout the cab you can see over there. Uh, just just briefly, it doesn't really it doesn't really quite lay so flat over there. You can kind of see. Uh, and then you can see little little miscellaneous areas around. That's the really the only reason that I wanted to use the glue was to keep some of these areas down. I wasn't gonna coat the whole carpet, carpet and glue, just use a couple spots. And then going back, I went ahead and I got the trim. This trim was in the truck. A lot of you guys probably didn't know I had this uh, because a lot of you guys are new to the channel. I took this out when I did the five speed swap because I did the floor pans. I welded those in and I need to take this out because there is two pieces of metal that meet right here and I had to break those spot welds off and put a new panel in. This will actually hold the hold this part of the floor down perfectly. Uh, you can kind of see it's got a little bubble and as I push this down, it kind of flattens everything out a little bit all the way up, which is kind of nice. So I think that'll be my solution here. And then I'm realizing the seats will hold this part down and everything else is you guys probably already commented a hundred times. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do there. And then some other people were commenting about the white on the dash. Oh, it's probably gonna be pretty bright. Maybe I should paint it a little bit better. Maybe I should do a couple things different there. Uh, the reason I didn't and I didn't care too much was because I actually do have another dash. This dash came off uh, when I took everything apart. So I do have another dash. This is going back on. And that's actually where we're gonna start today's video out on is because I'm gonna do a little bit of repairs on it. As you can probably see, it's got a crack right here and it doesn't sit flat and it bugs the absolute crap out of me. I really don't like looking at it, so I'm gonna fix that up pretty quick. Uh, I was doing a tiny, tiny repair, and you guys probably could barely see, but I actually put a tiny hairline crack in this thing. I was so upset, I put a crack in my dash. Uh, but this is actually an original dash from a, out of a 70 F250, I believe. Uh, so I did buy this. This is not the original dash. My interior used to be green. So I'm gonna start this video out by repairing this. Uh, this is kind of, a lot of people seem to have this issue. These dashes are very brittle. Um, I think this was me just pushing my finger a hair too hard a few months back when it was still in the truck. I don't even know. And then I think there's another crack somewhere on this dash, but everything on this is extremely brittle because it's, you know, 45 years old. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually end up taking taking this section out and replacing it. And what I'm replacing it with is this. This is actually perforated steel. This is off of McMaster car, I believe. So I actually pulled it up on my phone so you guys can probably see. So they, you know, it's just stuff like this. 
Uh, you can choose thicknesses, patterns, stuff like that. Uh, but I will leave the, the link to that so you guys can check it out. If you actually want to use something like this, you can use it for a multitude of things, uh, not just this. So I actually went ahead and folded the edges so it'll sit nice uh, and kind of sized it out. And so if I flip this over, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a ridge that kind of sits around here. And that's actually what I designed this to kind of do is sit flush inside of there. So it won't really take much epoxy or whatever I decide to use to hold it in. And that'll be my actual replacement for that. And I kind of think it'll look good because my gauge panel has that swirled aluminum plate on it. And I think this will kind of contrast to that pretty well. So I don't know. I just thought it would look better. It looks better than a cracked dash. And I mean, I'm not going for a completely original look. This is kind of a hot rod to me. So I wasn't really too set on keeping everything original. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this out and we're going to start putting this thing in. You can kind of see the look I was going for. I'm not getting too crazy because I still need to do some trimming, but I just wanted to get an initial look. I kind of like that. I think that looks pretty good, I must say. Um, but yeah, I like that. I think it looks good. It's also the nice part is the way I made it, it'll sit up a little bit and it actually kind of looks somewhat professional. I kind of like how that looks. Uh, but I'll take it off, polish it, make it look nice. Uh, I do want to get it fitted properly. You can see that's why I curved those edges so it'll sit pretty relatively flush inside of this thing uh, and then after that it's not going to be that hard to actually I'll go on the back side and actually put some sort of epoxy around the edge uh, to keep it in so see you after the next all right guys so I think I got it pretty much where I want it uh, I've had to you know hammer and dolly and bend it make it fit right but I think I've got the fitment that I want and if you check out right so right here I pretty much raised it in the back so if I go underneath all right so that's about where I'll have it so you can see it's pretty flat in the front this isn't like final final but flat in the front and it's got a it's a little bit raised in the back the reason I did that is you can see there's just a teeny little bit of the dash exposed there and I can see it in the back I didn't like that so I wanted to make sure if you're sitting because the dash sits like this you won't be able to see it I kind of like that look too it's kind of raised in the front kind of looks I don't know steampunk look but uh, that's pretty much our final fit I think I like that enough to where I'm gonna go ahead now and clean this piece up get ready to put it in I like that it came up pretty good all right so this is my Eastwood contour tool uh, you guys have seen me use this thing on the floors and I have a I believe 320 finishing drum on it and the nice thing about this is it finishes metal nice and smooth doesn't leave any lines so what I'm gonna do is take advantage of that tool real quick um, and just brush over and give it a nice brushed bare you know steel look so I'm gonna do a brush steel deal and see how see what actually works on this I haven't tried it on anything like this before but I'm pretty much just gonna turn it on and just roll the thing back and forth so let's see how it works too bad and now there's no pits no lines no nothing so I'm pretty happy with that so I think we're pretty much ready the only downside is there's a little nick chip right there you kind of see uh, but now I can go ahead and lay it in the dash go ahead and get that thing put in alrighty so I finished up the dash got everything installed and in the process I broke the dash and I'm really pissed about it but you know you can't really do much about it at this point it's already epoxied in everything fits now I pretty much just went underneath and just you know bordered the entire thing and just epoxy just to hold it in uh, and I, I mean it looks cool ish I don't know I'd rather have a nice dash but I don't know this crack almost makes me want to go buy a $400 dash which is annoying so I just gotta live with it now I guess it's just that ah god that really pisses me off but either way it looks decent I guess now I don't really care for it too much after that I just kind of got pissed off with the whole idea but it's in it fits it looks half decent I guess it's just kind of a whatever thing now uh, but I went ahead and I started cleaning up some other trim pieces as you can see this is a nice clear black now looks all pretty much brand new uh, which is pretty nice so I pretty much just took some of this stuff 
I tried two things, tire shine, the Lucas tire shine, and then this. Uh, this seemed to work a little bit better. The only downside is that this seems to leave a little bit more of a residue behind, which you just gotta take time to clean it off. But this one seems to penetrate plastic a little bit better. As you can see, it's a nice dark black again, which looks pretty nice, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna put that in the truck, and the carpet's almost all the way in now. Uh, a lot of people were saying I didn't have this, and I do. So I do have this. This fits, puts everything in, and uh, it does seem to hold the carpet in pretty well, I must say. So all of you guys were right. Okay, whatever. And then shifter's getting in. Uh, I trimmed around the steering column a little bit. Same with the parking brake. That's not completely done. Uh, the only thing left for the carpet, actually, is just the little trim piece that goes on the floor over there and the, where the heater box goes, anything needs to be moved around up there. But other than that, gas bulbs needs to go back in and the carpet's pretty much ready to rock. So uh, I've already drilled seat holes, as you can see. Uh, if you're doing this, just go ahead and put a little hole with an X-Acto knife and then just put the bolt in and out a bunch of times and it'll open up the hole. You don't need to have some special tool. So everything looks really, really good. I like how, how this all is, you know, like super clean. It's, you can't see anything, so. It's going pretty good so far, so I'm going to get back at it and come back when uh, I get the carpet in. Alright, so I just finished up these heater hoses I was talking about. This is kind of how they come, which you can see. You can see it's kind of got like a little circular clip. That's a long tube that you can bend in whatever shape you really need to. Um, but then it has this kind of flat part on the top, and as you can see, it's all kind of cut up and staples in it. So it comes with those little clips on both ends. And then here's the, for those of the people that actually asked me for it, that's the part number for it. Uh, I went ahead and I just punched that into Summit, came up, got it pretty cheap, got it pretty quick. But I had to modify it to work um, because it had two clamps on both sides And if you're familiar with this thing, you'll know that this has like a little cup kind of fitting to it It has to like sit flush in this thing um, And then it kind of comes down and then uh, out but it sits flush like that So it's kind of flat in the dash. It's kind of how it's mounted. So I had to cut the uh, or when I went ahead and had to cut that little clamp off on the inside you might be able to see it I don't really know but either way I had to cut that off and put, put that guy on and staple it in. It comes factory with staples in it, so I just had to put my own version of the staples in it. I uh, got that to fit right, and now it kind of just hangs in nice like that. I'll be able to route it to my heater box and put everything back together. So we're making headway. So I'm gonna go ahead and slam this heater box back in and get everything put together. Got the dash mostly in. There's a couple, my M12 died, so I'm too lazy to actually get in a real wrench and tighten them all down. But I mean, it looks pretty good, I would say. Um, these heater hoses, tubes, don't fit very well at all. Uh, as you can see, I had to smash the crap to get this one to fit. So I'm just gonna get an original one out of another truck because they're pretty common down here in San Diego. So if you're looking for the aftermarket heater hoses, I would not actually recommend those. I feel bad. I recommend them to one guy on Instagram. I hope, I can't remember his username at all. But if I told you to get these, they suck. Don't get them. They don't fit very well. This one fits. But you can see it's already gonna hit the glove, uh, glove box. I'm gonna have to move it back, like squeeze it back. But the uh, driver one does not work at all. Fixed all the heater uh, box issues that I had. You can see that's all nice and new. All the switching works really, really well is really nice you can see it all move back there this one works pretty well you can hear it all move everything works um truck runs runs are runs now so that's a plus carpet's in for the most part and we're about to put the seats in i'm just cleaning all this junk out took a bunch of wires out this was all the 
previous owner's way to wire a radio, which is completely incorrect. It's just a bunch of junk, so I ripped all that out. And now, back there, there's not a giant mess of wires. There used to be a cluster of wires right now. Now it's just all the stock harness, so. Uh, I've got a little bit of wire tucking to do, but, and then I gotta rewire my gauges. That's why there's a big fray over there. I still gotta redo all that. Um, but regardless, it is looking pretty good. Truck does run, I'll start it up in a little bit, but everything's getting there, I'm getting there. Alright guys, uh, we put the seat in, got most of everything in, I'm just, this is just going to be super rough, the seats are just set in, I don't even have bolts in them yet, <clears throat> and the uh, gauge cluster as you can see is just set in there just to kind of get an idea, I don't have the clips or anything set yet, um, but it gives you a really really good idea of what this thing is going to look like, with the dash and the carpet especially, got the hole poked for my clutch rod, you can see everything's super super clean, all the way up, tucked. Ran really nicely. Fuel line just poking through the hole. Seat brackets look good. Everything fits pretty decent. So I'm pretty pretty pumped on this. I just gotta vacuum it out again because the seats dumped a bunch of rat poop everywhere. Because yeah. I'll probably do something for the radio. I don't even know yet. Uh, glove box door is getting painted right now. Dash looks decent. I did put a freaking crack in it, which pisses me off, but I just gotta live with it at this point. Headliner still has to go back in. It's kind of a pain. Uh, it's a two person job. Visors are back in. Those are all painted up, look really nice. As you can tell, everything's nice and clean now. There's no, not even any orange peel or nothing. Looks pretty good. All the way down here, the transition's pretty nice. All the paint came out really good. Ignore all the ugly wiring. I haven't fixed that yet. But just from a distance, looks pretty good. It looks really good. Turn the brightness up a little bit. You guys can see everything now. There we go. So I think that's it's totally cool. It looks freaking awesome. I'm pumped with that. It looks good. I'm going to reupholster these seats. So things on the list to do. Rewire the gauges. Get rid of that completely cluster of mess back there. It's going to get all loomed and nice. Reupholster both seats while I'm here. Uh, get new little black bracket things. Whatever these things are called. I'll get new ones of those. Uh, the headliner still needs to go in. I'll do that with Sean. And do something for the radio, paint the glove box. A couple little odds and ends. Uh, what else? Ashtray needs to go back in. That's getting painted as well. But yeah, I think that's just about it actually. I'm pretty sure we're just about done. Which is awesome. Came out awesome. I'm super pumped with this, you guys. I don't know, I'm just, I could finish the whole thing and show you guys the finished product, but I don't want to delay the video another day uh, just to kind of finish it. So I'll just have it done in the next video. Cause all I got to do is, you know, put the, those things I said in the headliner in and that's all stuff I can do off camera. It's not really too big of a deal. I don't think you guys need to absolutely see me install a headliner. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm ecstatic with the way this thing looks. Like just as I walk backwards, it gets crappier and crappier. <laughs> <laughs> I trip over my shot back and then you come in and it's just like boom nice pretty truck isn't that amazing oh my gosh but fitment for the carpets ah, I give it like a seven or eight out of ten you can see it folds right there which is kind of annoying I put a piece of tape up at the top just to kind of hold it because it liked to flop down so I didn't use any glue because you guys told me not to see so there's a little little fold right there up in up in the corner uh, a couple other things you can see it doesn't really lay flat as so I get kind of lower doesn't really lay flat right there. There's a couple other spots that doesn't lay flat, but I'm assuming if it just sits in the hot heat, it'll kind of mellow out a little bit. It doesn't really, if I use the flashlight to my advantage. See, it doesn't really sit flat there. A couple other spots doesn't really lay flat, but yeah, it's all right. I mean, paid a pretty good amount of money for the carpet. So I'm like, I guess you could say I'm happy with it. I still like the way it looks and everything. Um, I am kind of upset about the dash and how I cracked it, but my little chrome piece, yeah, my little stainless piece, Showed you guys how I did that. I think that came out all right. Looks pretty decent. Just, just something different. You don't see that kind of stuff. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, a good way to take a piece of junk and kind of do it uh, your own way. 
All right, guys, so I'm super, super excited with the way this is all coming out. It's taken me a really long time, and I really apologize for that, but it's just like one thing after another. And when you get this far into something like this, you just don't want to like half-ass it and put it all together just to put it together. So I've taken a lot of time doing stuff off camera, fighting parts, breaking parts, going to the junkyard, getting replacement parts, putting it all together, making it all work. And so far, it's gonna, it's super, super close. I mean, the truck does run. I'll literally show you that real quick. So everything still works. So it works really well. It's the first time I've heard it in like a month. So really, really happy with the way this stuff stuff's coming out. Uh, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching all your support and feedback with the last couple of videos. We've been doing really, really good. We're, we just broke 40,000. I'm really, really pumped on that. We're already past 41, 42,000 almost. Uh, and we're just making our way up to the 50,000 and then hopefully eventually the 100,000 mark. Uh, I'm incredibly thankful for you guys. You guys' support is amazing. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Smash the like if you did enjoy this video. It really, really mean a lot to me. Uh, subscribe if you are new. There's gonna be a lot of cool stuff coming with this truck. We're getting really, really close to be able to put this thing on a new chassis, which is super, super awesome. Which is super, super awesome. And uh, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys. Messing up my freaking flashlight, dude. He's been my photographer boy. <laughs>